scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. And we took our time by the Spirit of God to hear the things that the Lord would have us hear, even by His grace. And the Lord has declared that this is a year of great grace. Now, now I know that several ministries receive different words. Now, God has an agenda for the entire earth. Are you listening to me? And then he has an agenda for continents. Are you following me now? And then he has an agenda for territories. So there is the agenda of God for the world, for mankind. There is the agenda of God for the continent of Africa. Africa has a role to play. Are you following me now? There is an agenda for Nigeria in this season. Are you following me now? And then every ministry that names the name of Christ has an agenda. And so it's the job and the responsibility of the leaders to find out. It's not just a word and say, we're not saying this is what God is doing all over the earth necessarily. We're saying that this is how he would love us to position ourselves to fit into the big picture of prophecy that he will be bringing. And so you find out that different words can come from different ministries. Although I am aware that there are people who just sit down and browse the internet for the number 12 and then they say this is a year of uh, government or something. You see, um, while it is good that we bring out prophetic things, it's important that we don't guess what we feel God is saying. It's important we stay real time in his presence and hear what he's saying he said that which i tell you in the secret declare thou on the mountaintop i said he will not do anything but reveal his secrets to his servants and prophets the secret things of the lord are with them that fear him and he will show them his covenants hallelujah he said if you seek me early you will find me and so god has given us this word and when people receive words like this the first thing we do is to jump and to celebrate and, and now that's wonderful but if you have been here for a while you understand that we are not just people who jump at promises we are always positioned to find out how we will align ourselves with prophecy let me tell you something about prophecy before you sit down you see the bible prophesied that someone was going to betray jesus he didn't mention the name of any man the Bible says that he will be given birth to by a virgin. He didn't call Mary. Are you listening to me? He said he will ride upon a donkey. He didn't call the name of any man. You see, prophecy is such that when it comes to this earth realm, it begins to scan for human vessels who can align with the condition to make that prophecy come to pass. Are you following me now? And so, prophecy is not automatic that it means that it's going... No, if God declares a word and says, I intend to bless you, that word begins to find those who fit the condition for its manifestation. It goes around the entire earth looking for those who posture themselves. Are you listening to me? And so, it is possible Mary would have violated. That's why permission was asked from her before she got pregnant. The angel came to seek permission. If she refused, the world will look for another virgin. Jesus would still have been born. Because no man played his fatherly role. And so it really wouldn't have mattered so much who played the motherly role. Because he still wouldn't come with the blood of mankind. Hallelujah. Are you following me now? And so when God gives prophecy, 
it's not just it's not just to receive and jump no no that's the reason why you can have a vision for instance and see that god is healing one person and then you find out that 20 people will come they have positioned themselves to enter the reality of that prophecy hallelujah he, he was he was brought to heal the nation of israel and then a gentle woman came and positioned herself and said even the dogs eat from the crumbs and she forced herself into that prophecy are you following me now and so when we when prophecies are released that's not the time to just rejoice it's the time to align hallelujah it's the time to align and tonight will not be taking so much time i'll just share to prepare our hearts and then we pray hallelujah Ah, Elohim, Elohim, Madonna. Ah, Elohim, Elohim, Madonna. Ah, Elohim, Elohim, Madonna. Ah, Elohim, Hello, Kim Madonna. Hello, Kim. Hello, Kim Madonna. Hello, Kim. Hello, Kim Madonna. Hello, Kim. Elohim Adona Elohim Hallelujah Hallelujah Haggai Shiba Bo Saparianda Kaboshta Haggai chapter two Haggai chapter two verse 6 Haggai chapter 2 verse 6 for thus saith the Lord of hosts that name there is El Elyon listen hold on stop I need to explain to you every time God is speaking don't just observe what he's saying observe what dimension of him is speaking there are times that he speaks as El Shaddai there are times he speaks as El Elyon there are times he speaks as Yahweh. The dimension he's speaking tells you the gravity of what he's trying to communicate. And he said, Thus saith the Lord of hosts. The word there is El Elyon. Hallelujah. El Elyon. Every time he uses the name El Elyon, he's about to speak over something that has to do with men who have been contending in the earth. The Lord of hosts, El Elyon. Now El Elyon is speaking. He said, Yes. Yet once it is a while and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land and I will shake all nations and the desire of all nations shall come and I will fill this house. There is a particular house, not every house. I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. Hmm. Verse 8, the silver is mine and the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. Verse 9, let's read together. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than the glory of the former. And in this place I will give peace. Now, the word peace there is not just quietness and rest. The word peace there is shalom. Hallelujah. It means prosperity it means deliverance it means blessings are you following me now there's something the jewish people had called the covenant of peace it wasn't just the covenant it was a covenant of health covenant of prosperity covenant of well-being and so god is saying because my glory will fill this place i will cause that shalom prosperity health blessings and everything that i represent the word glory is from the hebrew word kabod the greek is doxa it means the weightiness the full presence the true essence and the nature of a person or a thing and god is saying every time my true person my glory 
the weight of all that I am and all that I represent fills a place and a people, they will experience shalom. The peace of God that passes all understanding, the quietness and rest. Hallelujah. And so God is set to glorify you this year. God is set to bring an ornament of glory upon your life that will shock you. I love speaking at the first meetings of every year because at the end of the year you will listen and then you will see the sequence of the manifestations of the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. I love it so much when things are declared before they happen. That's why God will oftentimes speak so that men will try to stop him and then he will ride in his majesty and do it all the same. And you say, I am proving to you that I am Lord. He's the only one who is not afraid. You know, we're always, if you are building, you say, don't tell anybody until the house is complete. God will say, this is what I want to do. Do your worst. So long as you align, I can do it. Every factor notwithstanding. Hmm. Hallelujah. And so it's God's desire that we will walk in not just glory, great glory. Great glory. Hallelujah. That we will walk in levels of God's life, the fullness of the kingdom life with power and authority and we will legislate on behalf of heaven I'm telling you I'm excited about 2012, not because it's the beginning of the year, you know every year you were excited about last year you know, <laughs> for many of you say last year thank you, you went, don't ever come back again but this is quite a year, hallelujah it's so significant that even the Mayans in ancient time had something to say about this year 2012 the eyes of many soothsayers voodoo yoga all over the world their eyes has been on 2012 there's something significant about this year and it will unfold as we see for many people they are afraid because of the year the way the year is starting and all of that and um i bring you a word of encouragement fear not the Lord is not wondering what to do from heaven. He's not holding an emergency meeting to say, are you seeing what is going on in this country called Nigeria? What for God's sake do we do? He is king of kings. There is nothing called future in his presence. What we call our future is his past. And so when he speaks, he speaks from that realm of dominion. When he tells you all things are alright, trust him. We are yet to see our future. But he has gone there and come back. He exists in that span. He's not called Alpha and Omega. He's called Alpha Omega. He's at the beginning and at the end at the same time. And it is from that perspective that he tells you everything is alright. He says, say unto the righteous, it shall be well. Say unto the righteous. Hallelujah. Be seated in God's presence. Thank you. Good to see everyone. We're really looking beautiful, handsome, wonderful, glorious, colorful, bright. I hope that this is how you'll be smiling when we're holding our last service for this year. You know, it's amazing how people start New Year with all kinds of big and joy. And when we're dancing for the final service, we just say, God, thank you. Ah! Did I survive? Say, Lord, let it not come back again. But this is a year that you will miss it so much when you are going into 2013. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'll be speaking briefly on dimensions of grace. Second Peter chapter 2. Chapter 1, really. Second Peter chapter 1. Dimensions of grace. Thank you, Lord. dimensions of grace we'll be exploring the revelation of God's grace trying to understand the concept of grace hallelujah since God has declared that this is a year of great grace and glory it's important for us to understand what grace is and the requirements for grace and I'll be speaking really briefly hallelujah verse 2 let's read together 
second peter one are you there say amen i hope you bought a new bible this year listen you, you must make some resolutions under the anointing of the spirit this year no more bond bibles that half of it was born with fire and you take a um, bible that you received when you were doing evangelism you know in secondary school fcs brought it for you you put it in your pocket you, you, this is a year to grow say myself grow up all right let's continue verse two let's read together one to read stop grace and peace be what be multiplied hallelujah this is an epistle that peter is writing to the church he said grace be multiplied grace be multiplied oftentimes paul will start his epistles by saying grace grace have you read that in your bible grace be unto you and peace from our lord jesus christ grace 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 and here peter is saying grace be multiplied so there's a mystery that the ancient knew and they understood about the grace of god grace be multiplied unto you hallelujah and so we are, we've established from the word of god that god's grace can be multiplied grace can be multiplied but what is this grace really when we talk about grace when people meet you and say kai you are making it in this life where say it's god's grace oh and many believers don't even know what we are talking about what is grace hallelujah tonight i choose to be very simple and straight and direct to the point we are just starting we have other meetings where we have the opportunity to trash things out but one of my goals this year is to make the gospel as simple plain basic and as applicable as it can be are you following me now the end of every revelation is application that you can receive and apply it hallelujah what is grace and i'm talking about dimensions of grace and so from the definition i'm going to open us up to um, a twofold working of grace that we'll be considering hallelujah generally speaking grace talks about god's unmerited access talks about um unmerited access an access that is given unto you that you do not merit that you did not work for are you listening to me very very important revelation chapter 3 verse 8 says i set before you an open door you didn't open it by yourself i set before you an open door he said no man can shut it hallelujah and so the grace of god talks about his unmerited access his ability that comes in to cover for your inadequacies hallelujah where god steps in to do above and beyond what your efforts can do the grace of god hallelujah that's the general definition that um many believers and many christian circles know about grace hallelujah another word for grace based on that definition or another dimension of grace it's called favor hallelujah that's what i just defined for you so if you're writing you can write favor grace is the manifestation of the favor of god in your life that he shows you favor he brings to you something that uh, blessings and riches and positions that you do not merit hallelujah but the second dimension of grace that i'll also be teaching is god's divine enablement write it god's divine enablement god's divine enablement that causes you to do things and accomplish things far beyond your effort and your capacity god's divine enablement you can call that the enablement of god and these are the two dimensions of grace we are going to be considering tonight hallelujah every time god talks about grace for many believers our concept of grace is just um okay god opening doors for me you know i will occupy houses i didn't build collect people's cars i didn't buy you know and and and, and, now, and now, there's a dimension of that grace it's called the favor of god he said thou shall arise and have mercy upon zion for the time to favor her yea the kairos time the set time is come hallelujah the bible says how that when 
Egypt, Israel found favor in the eyes of Pharaoh and the Egyptians and they spoiled the Egyptians. They left Egypt with plenty. They left with their bounty. Hallelujah. The Bible makes us to understand how that Daniel, Joseph, Queen Esther, different people found favor. And so there is, there is a place of God's favor. Are you following me now? And so when God is saying it's a season of great grace, one of the things God is saying is that you will step into dimensions of his favor. Are you following me now? That you will experience the favor of God in an unlimited dimension even in this season. That God will bring things into your life that is beyond your prayer life, beyond your prayer and fasting. Are you listening to me? God will bring you into certain levels of blessings and give you as an inheritance. The Bible says, for by grace you are saved. Why? Because you didn't do anything. You just responded to the grace and the mercy of God. Are you following me now? You didn't have to go and crucify yourself. So it's by the grace of God. That dimension of his favor that lavishly bestows things upon you that you did not work for. Hallelujah. But then there is a dimension of his grace that I'd like us to examine briefly. It's called the enablement the spirit when God tells us it's a season of great grace that's because there will be great responsibilities are you following me now that means that there will be responsibilities beyond your natural human capacity are you listening to me remember when Paul prayed and he had all kinds of infirmities and challenges what did God say my grace is sufficient that was not favor my enablement so when Paul speaks to the church here and says grace be multiplied because they were busy in the vineyard doing the works of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Great grace. The enablement of the spirit. There are several things that we have to do and accomplish this year by the grace of God. And humanly speaking we are unable to do this. Let me tell you something. When God gives you an assignment it will always be bigger than you and your capacity. If God ever gives you anything that is equal to you that you can do be sure that was not God. Go back and pray. Hallelujah. Moses tell the people to move forward. How could God say such a thing? Do you know the audacity it takes to stand before two million people and say ladies and gentlemen here you go that's your way. Those guys were not laughing. Pharaoh was behind. Moses was under pressure. Are you listening to me? So it takes the enabling grace of the spirit for you to be able to push through certain things because it will require you riding for, for many of us this year will require you breaking status quo. Status quo in your family. Certain things that have been the norm. And I tell you the truth, it will require the enablement of the spirit to take, many of us will be taking giant steps this year. Steps that you never had the audacity to take. As individuals, as ministers, will be taking steps that are humanly speaking bigger than your capacity. But when you realize that there is the great enablement of the spirit, then you say, Lord, I can take this load. It humanly looks bigger than me. How many of you have studied the lives of the ants when an ant wants to lift i hear that it's able to lift something about 50 times its size the ant has the revelation of great grace and it comes without thinking twice and just leaves the food and, and, and when you look at the ant you cannot understand where the strength is coming from you blow the ant and it will it will shift away you blow what he wants to carry and it will not shift yes the ant will come and lift it that's a spiritual mystery we must study the ants, that's why I say go to the ant, you sluggard. There's a lot to learn. Hallelujah. Many of us will be carrying weights that humanly speaking would have suppressed you to death. But you will ride it through and people will say from whence cometh this energy? And you say it's the great grace of God. Enablement to accomplish supernatural things. Things that you would either to be afraid of. Many of you, great grace will come upon you and you will preach the gospel and win souls like you have never done in your life. Many of you will see yourself healing people and getting people filled with the Holy Spirit. You will be surprised. The grace of God at work in you. Hallelujah. It's on account of His grace that we will experience His glory. And so we must prepare and posture ourselves. Paul is speaking 
I mean, Peter is speaking to the church and he says, grace be multiplied. The abundance of it. Hallelujah. He's speaking this and prophesying to them because of the things he's about to tell them. Are you following me now? Every time God wants to give you great instructions, he supplies grace. When God wants to move you to a new level and a new dimension, the first thing is not the assignment. The first thing is the enablement. The only challenge is that it takes the faith of the Son of God for us to begin to move. Because you may not even feel anything. You will not feel more anointed. You will not feel more graced. But the enablement comes with the word that has been spoken. It has nothing to do with your feelings. And then you find yourself walking in realms and dimensions and doing things that are far beyond your capacity. Hallelujah. So how many of you believe that God is lavishly releasing grace upon us even in this season? The grace that manifests as his favor in our lives. We expect to see things beyond our efforts. But that's not room enough to fold our hands and smile. And say, oh thou God of grace. Fire on. Do whatever, do what only you can do. You know, believers pray that prayer as an expression of laziness sometimes. You say, God, do what only you can do. And then God says, what of the one we can do together? This is koinonia. You say, God, I don't want, I don't want to share your glory. Do alone and take the glory. Let me just take the blessings. What's the difference between blessings and glory? Hallelujah. So many believers like running away from responsibilities. You say, Lord, you say, this work... I, I can't try to be God. I won't take your place. Do your thing. Take your glory. Just carry me along. No, this, this is not a year to be carried along. This is the year to participate. That's why we say koinonia is intimacy and partnership. Hallelujah. That we have a mutual partnership with divinity. Hallelujah. Grace. Many of us will ride over things that used to be challenges last year as if they don't exist it's called the grace of god you will hear certain things that you would have had last year and cried and you smile over it and say god is still faithful and people say what in the world is going on it's called grace the grace of god now your family members call you and say things are going from bad to worse in this country and you smile and say i still see that he is faithful from what dimension are you speaking the grace of god supernatural enablement your father wants to build build a house the foundation has been there for years and you tell him daddy this is the year of great grace who are thou mounting before Zerubbabel this is the time when you will fall down flat you tell him there is this is a year of grace where we will push through and accomplish things by the spirit eh? where will the money come from the grace of God there is an enablement are you following me? Many of us can pray for 20 minutes. At the end of 20 minutes, you are pinching everything you can pinch around you. But there is grace for you. That you will stretch through and build. There are many people that hate times of prayer. They hate prayer meetings in this place. The moment we say tonight, you say, prayer day, why did I come? But there is grace. He said, quicken us and we will call upon your name. Hallelujah. Do you believe these things I'm sharing? Because that's what God is preparing us. For me, I have, I have prayed and entered into this prophecy. I told God, Lord, if people think they've seen anything about my life, brace up, you're about to see a shocker in 2012. If you think you've seen anything about ENI and Koinonia, I bring the word with audacity. This year, you will open your mouth and put your hands, mark my words. You will see accomplishments by the Spirit. Things that no human being can take credit for. Every time you see it and men ask you, say grace. That's going to be your language this year. Grace. Grace. That every time you go to prayer, your prayer will be, Lord, thank you for your grace. Thank you for grace. When they give you a task and an assignment, you say, Lord, I'm not crying. There is grace. There is an abundant supply of grace. God says it's in this season. You will begin to partner with ministries just as you are. How will it happen? The grace. There is an enablement from heaven. It's not by your power. It's not by your might. Great grace. Hallelujah. 
in Acts chapter 4 verse 33 can someone read Acts chapter 4 verse 33 let's see what happened to the early church Acts chapter 4 verse 33 and with great power and with listen he said and with great, great power gave the apostles okay witness of the resurrection witness of the resurrection of the lord jesus of the lord jesus and great grace was upon them and great grace was upon them great grace was upon them so they began to accomplish supernatural things have you ever wondered why paul single-handedly would travel to asia minor conquering people these people will step into cities and within days they will begin to shake the foundations of those cities it's called grace grace the grace of god one man with that publicity suddenly churches will begin to mobilize themselves and support him and finance him it's called grace are you listening to me when you understand the language of grace this year will you will move in a way as though satan does not exist it's called grace we were going to travel to my duguri um last last week i was there and um there was change in plans in the flight i should do so we we thought it was in the evening myself and steve strings hallelujah and we left in the afternoon to go to abuja and there take our flight and we just got to find out that we missed the flight and we needed to be there and you know you know my degree is far right really really far from my degree to lagos is a two hours drive that's the farthest distance border to border of this country hallelujah and i told the driver i said can you go to my degree and he was just looking at me who in the world will want to go to my degree on the road on a friday and I told him if you are ready let's go and we carried Steve strings we were leaving we left Kano not up to an hour when the bomb blast started hallelujah and when we got to Damaturu we could not we couldn't get in because of the curfew and so we got there by seven and they said we had to sleep. <laughs> we had to sleep outside I mean sleep in the car and I looked at Steve I said Steve there's grace for us see you in the morning how it will happen i mean i tried to sleep i woke up i found i was just 30 minutes i said what this is not funny we're going to be here till 6 12 straight hours but then here and there you know we went through the whole hustle and bustle and we saw the grace of god the time came where in damaturu and we're about to enter a place that had been earmarked as a no-go area because we didn't know once you enter there military men will begin to shoot you because they believe you are terrorists and so we entered and while we were moving the grace of god and people started shouting non-believers we noticed they started shouting at us and calling and saying no come back turn turn and then we turned the driver turned the car and when he came two of them non-christians came out from their car and entered our car and led us through the path until we came out to a place of safety we didn't pay them we didn't do anything are you following me it's called what grace and when we got to the police the, the military checkpoints it was so strict sometimes they would just come and look at us and the soldiers say, oh, God. and then they'll just say pass they couldn't explain what do we call it it's called grace hallelujah called grace the grace of God will set you apart the grace of God will bless you and bring certain blessings to you I think Manasseh is aware someone walked up to us and, and told us that he was going to shoulder fueling the generator for koinonia right from now till the quarter of the year and he gave a deposit and he said he's still bringing another one what did we give him nothing it's called what grace do you believe what i'm telling you it's an enablement of the spirit it's called grace you step into realms of abundance so we must embrace the multifaceted dimension of grace are you following me there is a dimension that will enable you to accomplish things but then there is only so much you can do and there is a dimension called the favor of god 
the favor of God. Where strangers will feed your flocks and your gates will be continually open to receive the forces of the Gentiles. You will step into a place and see people beating themselves left, right and center to make way for you. And you'll be wondering, what is it? It's not about my qualification. My name doesn't even sound it. Where jobs will look for you without you applying. People will come and beckon on you and beg you. Do you believe what I'm saying? The grace of God. Where you'll be lying down, you are not praying, you are not fasting, but revelations will begin to be downloaded. And when you step out, people will think that you have been in a place, they think you lock yourself for 200 days. But you just open the Bible and see a straight line from Genesis to Revelation. It's called grace. Hallelujah. There are many of us that you will lie down, there will almost be no night you will not have a dream or see something or have direction from the Spirit. You will hear a voice beyond your prayer life. Even when you talk to somebody and say, ah, look at you, your big head, suddenly you are still hearing revelation many of you you will utilize your the notepads on your phones this year like never before because you'll become not just a talking spirit but a writing spirit god will be communicating things what to do direction by the grace of god hallelujah do you believe that supernatural accomplishment some of you will be sitting your family members will be sitting down like this and someone will just come and carry a check and say the lord led me to sow this for the building that has been waiting and your father will say sorry you are you a number but tell me this nigeria is corrupt and the person will say sorry i'm just acting on that instructions have a nice day the grace of god are you following now the grace of god for many of you the grace of god will fish you out you will hear a report from your department they say they are calling you they said there was a time when something happened and uh, are you you owe this and that and that and they'll say come we just found out that there was a problem we apologize and after years the bible says a time came when mordecai was good to the king but nothing happened then there was a day when the chronicles was opened he called it the book of remembrance and the king began to search and say ah come on mordecai did this he stopped people from killing me did they reward him and then he called Haman. Isn't it interesting that when God wants to bless you, he uses your enemies. Haman thought it was for himself. So his selfishness made him to give the best. He said, ah, I know what that kind of man will get. Stand upon a horse and everybody will ride. He said, this is what we'll do to Haman. And you are the one who organized it. He makes a table before me in the presence of my enemies. This is not the year to worry about enemies. This is the year to concentrate on your partnership with the king and keep moving let me tell you friends you will drip in unlimited grace unlimited grace Un you will buy something from someone's shop and that day the person will see you and say come 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 i'll give you something free the day you left my shop people came in a way i made more sales that day what is it about your life you tell him there is a dimension of grace are you following me there is a dimension of grace you visit a family and they just tell you we are trusting God. The children have not been moving forward, no admission. And they just say, Lord, we release grace. Let there be an abundant supply of grace. Suddenly you will call and hear that two of them are married, two have gotten admission, one is doing his master's work. Grace that brings acceleration. The Bible makes us to understand that Elijah told Ahaz, he said, saddle your ass for I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. Ahaz had gone far while he went back and he sat down praying. The Bible says suddenly when he saw a hand like the fist of a man, he knew that it was the manifestation of that grace. And the Bible says the hand of the Lord came upon him. He tied, he girded his loins and with his bare foot, can you imagine? He ran and overtook the chariots of Ahaz. See, let me tell you something. You will accomplish more this year. You will, I'm, I'm not just prophesying. I'm speaking to you sincerely. You will accomplish more this year. Unlimited dimensions of accomplishments by the Spirit. Many of you who are trusting God to set up structures that can help your family and bring food in the table for you will receive ideas and the enabling grace of the Spirit. You will move with the strength of a nation. One man. The Bible said that there was a man called Samson. That when the hand of the Lord comes upon that man, he will accomplish things. 
I tell you the truth, Samson was like me. Otherwise, Delilah would not ask him for the source of his strength. If I lift this speaker or that speaker with one hand, you certainly know I did it by grace. Correct? I don't look like the kind of person who would do that. Um, I always say, it. I know how God designed me. That's why I don't fight. I only speak the word. I love the kingdom. No fighting. You speak the word. Ah! If we had to use effort. I prefer to be a Levite. I'll just sit in the temple to force and meditate. Mediating like, like Anna the prophetess. Hallelujah. Great grace be multiplied unto you. That's what God wants to bring into our lives. And then suddenly because of the manifestation of God's grace, you begin to see beauty and glory in your life like you have never seen. The manifestation of the Spirit, you will begin to... See, I'm telling you, a time will come when people will beg you to touch anything that belongs to them just so that you can release this grace. It will be scary because even you, you will not be able to explain it. Let me use Bishop Oedeko's words. It will be inexplainable but undeniable. I love him so much. Inexplainable. So when people ask you and say, Wumi, how is this thing happening in your life like this? You tell them, honestly, it's God's grace. So many of you who don't have Michael Smith's song, go and get it. You will need to listen to that song again and again. Supernatural accomplishments. You're just sitting and they just call you and say you have qualified for something in your department. I don't have the highest CGPA. The, the exam officer said, it's none of my business. I was given an instruction. Grace. You miss out on a test and they are giving everybody zero and the lecturer looks at you and says, you have been looking at you. Anyway, we are giving a makeup test. Grace. Do you believe what I'm saying? In your place of work, in your endeavors. For me, I'm already enjoying the unlimited dimensions of God's grace. And I told myself, I said, Lord, I will walk in this dimension of grace. I tell you the truth. The favor of God will speak in your life in a way. That many people can say, this thing is not fair. Ah. Hallelujah after me i'm well positioned to enjoy great grace i pray you understand the gravity of what you are saying say i'm well positioned to enjoy great grace for the glory of the lord is risen upon you the grace of the lord is risen upon you the grace of the Lord is risen upon you. We arise, shine, the light is come. For glory of the Lord, the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For the glory of the Lord, the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. We the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. I see the glory of the Lord. The glory of the Lord is risen upon me. In the vision that the Lord showed me, I saw right outside here, I saw three cars. One bus, one car that I thought it was just a bus we were going to buy. And God said, the grace. There is there's so much responsibility there's grace i saw i saw plenty cars in this place i said lord what is this what 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 are all these cars? and god said i will make abundant supply see let me tell you something people will criticize you because you enter realms that they feel you have not you are not qualified to enter it's for the service of the kingdom hallelujah many of you this year you will begin to sow seeds and partner in millions i know it doesn't make sense many of you will literally turn i tell you the truth god himself you will step back into your family and a situation that has eaten your family up 
Satan having his way. You say, Satan, I come in with great grace. Get lost. Get out of this family. And suddenly, your dad who has been lying, paralyzed, almost dying, suddenly jacks up. Great grace. It's, it's beyond your prayer life. Great grace. Great grace. He said, great grace was upon the apostles. Many of you, you will run like Elijah. This is the year when you will run. You will run at a speed that is beyond that of your contemporaries. Grace. Grace. You will sit down and stretch and pray for hours in the spirit. Study the word for hours in the spirit. Accomplish things. A quickening of your mind by the spirit of God. Hallelujah. Many of you, this is the year you will wait bye bye to carry over forever. Because grace, a mantle of grace will come on you. You will run with the spirit of Elijah. That even when they give a, what they call shotgun, there will be enabling grace. Nothing will take you aback. You will stand with a stamina that is beyond your mental capacity. It's called grace. Many of you will see increase in your businesses and finances. Ideas by the spirit. In the middle of the night, the Spirit of God will wake you. You will hear a voice from behind saying, This is the way. This is the way. This is the way. No, don't go this way. No, go this way. Direction by the Spirit. Hallelujah. Many of us, this is the year you will experience a performance. Many of you have never seen the word of God working in your life. I know you will say the word works. This is the year you will see a performance. Performance. He said, but I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed. He said, being confident of this very thing. That he which has begun a good work in me. He is able to perform it. This is the year of the performance. You will perform things. You will see the manifestation of the word of God. I speak it by the spirit according to the abundance of grace that is supplied unto me. You will run like Elijah in the name of Jesus. You will move with the spirit of Elijah. Accomplishments by the spirit beyond your age, beyond your level of exposure. Levels of grace like you have never seen.
Grace upon your spirit. Hallelujah. There are times in this year when the Lord will tell you, go around Jericho seven times, and He will give you strength beyond your capacity. At the seventh time, He will give you energy to make the shout. And the walls will go down there are other times he will say you don't need to go around stand still and I will show you the salvation of God friends I see accomplishments by the Spirit this year I see it many of you will hit your target for the year even before half of the year is gone You shall not see wind you shall not see rain yet the valley shall be filled with water the grace of God will place some of you this year in the presence of kings and nobles people you offices you never would have entered hear me mark my word I'm speaking by the spirit the grace of God will take many of you and place you in positions where men can bless you many of you the grace of God will open the doors of nations for you beyond Nigeria beyond Nigeria it's called grace hallelujah a family of faith we will run corporately with a dimension of grace that will make many of you afraid can I tell you something in the vision that the Lord showed me I saw a lot of criticisms because a time came because of the performance of God some of you looking at me now even became skeptical and began to say Kai are we really sure that this level of increase and expansion is the hand of God some of you looking at me that's why we are praying because you will see things that are beyond the manifestations of men God will do it even by his spirit many of you God will literally alter the state of your families I mean 
you are in a dunghill today tomorrow you are in a palace by the spirit of god in spite of the fact that it looks like there is turbulence around the nation can i tell you something the agenda of god has not changed this country is about to see the grace of god in a fearful way i feel sorry for those who feel this country will be divided there's no time i would have shown you in isaiah 18 nigeria right there nigeria is in the bible it wasn't lord lugar that brought nigeria together it was a definite orchestration of the spirit of god and who shall speak a thing and it comes to pass when god has not declared it but friends our job tonight or my job tonight is to stir up the spirit of faith in you to understand that we are going to be operating principally in two dimensions of grace one the favor of god this is the season when god will arise and have mercy upon his zion for the time see let me tell you the grace of god will restore things to many of you that you never believe you will get back restore years of tears he said and i will restore all the years not some all the years that the canker worm the caterpillar the palmer worm the performance of the spirit Times where you were delayed at home and you couldn't go to school there is a payback the lord himself times where you would have compromised you suffered for standing in for the truth the lord is about to roar from heaven and pour upon you grace great grace for many of us in ministry who have been quietly building through the years this is the year of the performance where the lord himself will pick you nobody will be able to shut any door against you Amen. because before you step in god himself will open the door this is the year when we'll call on one person and a nation will answer you will watch unbelievers partner with the agenda of god in a way that you have never seen with their with their finance with access with endorsement with everything do you believe this do you believe this because the bible says blessed is she that believes for unto her there shall be a performance the performance is only for them that believe i've taken out time to soak it in my spirit and i said lord i believe it's an awesome man and, and, and i'm excited about it hallelujah i'll be sharing with us certain things that god shared with me as we continue two of them will shock you one is the mystery of something the bible calls the key of david two places in the bible where god said something about the key of david i began to say what is it about the key of david And then the blessings of Abraham. You know, many of us know the no, 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 no. We are going to share on what the Bible calls the blessings of Abraham. And then you will understand by my revelation that outside of Abraham, everybody is an illegal occupant on the earth right now. <laughs> mm. Thank you, Jesus. Let's finish this scripture so we can round up. Second Peter one verse two. grace and peace be multiplied unto you are you ready are you there all right let's read again one to read grace and peace be multiplied unto you how stop how so how is grace and peace multiplied through the knowledge as you expose yourself to the revelatory knowledge of the christ you find out that you are walking in abundance of grace are you saying that it's not just the issue of claiming there is knowledge that brings grace are you listening to me he said grace and peace be multiplied through the knowledge through the knowledge of god and of jesus our lord so there is a dimension of knowledge and understanding that causes grace to be multiplied in your life are you listening to me 
there are things that God has shared with me over the last one month I have cried like a baby and I kept laughing at myself I felt so embarrassed when you know sometimes when people look at you and say Kai you are matured spiritually when God began to open me up to truths higher truths and greater lights of the kingdom I just looked at myself and said oh my God can you imagine the grace of God is multiplied according to the abundance of knowledge that is granted unto you. Hallelujah. So two people can see a challenge and one will walk through it as though nothing exists. And the other one will stand there. Say after me, knowledge. This is a time when you will brace up. I listened to all the ENI messages for last year. All. It was part of my retreat. I was listening to the man of God preaching and ministering to me. Are you listening to me? I listened to it. I soaked it. I prayed my life out. And I said, Lord, all the blessings that you have spoken through your servant last year, I receive it. There is a difference between Josh the person and when the grace of God comes. When you know that difference, it will help you to know when you are a minister and when you are you. There are times that God will use the minister in you to speak to you. And if you know that difference, some of you will just be praying and suddenly the ministerial anointing will come upon you and you will begin to prophesy your solution by yourself. And if you do not have enough discernment to realize when the spirit is upon you in power, you will miss out on several things. Are you following me now? And so this is a time of unlimited grace. Brothers and sisters, there is so much to do for the kingdom this year. We'll be announcing some of our activities, but there is so much for the kingdom. I have this to tell you. Do not be surprised at whatever you see in your life and especially in this place. You are witnesses that we love God and we fear him sincerely. But you are about to see a performance of divinity through men that will shock you that will dwarf every accomplishment for the kingdom you will see so winning strategies in a way that will shock you ways that we will win souls this year for the kingdom hallelujah i prayed and i told god greater grace to be able to establish people in the truth this year we are not interested in just doing ministry and coming on Friday and just getting excited. It's my goal this year that if anyone is picked at random, you can be able to represent the kingdom and speak in power and light. Where it is not just a select few. Are you following me now? I was so blessed hearing Abraham's testimony. The gentleman who shared the testimony here was a drug addict, was into all kinds of things. But today is blood washed spirit filled loves the lord winning souls that's the kind of testimony where the least among us becomes as great as david doing great things for the kingdom let me tell you friends god will be engaging everybody in this place this year this is not the year to sit down and watch for many of you your ministry this year will start from facebook god will just commission you to start doing something on facebook sending daily scriptures to people are you listening to me some of you your ministry will start on what they call that thing that people can almost hit themselves on the wall because to go are you listening to me many of you your ministry this year will be to be a link man between where there is revelation and where there is need for it so prepare to embrace it's not you must have a ministry joshua selman international ministry a place of power and miracles no then he said that's my secretary that's my pa mm -mm. it's going to be an engaging year are you listening to me for many of you god will give you the responsibility to begin to study on kingdom finances and go and hold a seminar for your father and mother and change their lives for many of you this will be the year where you have a project to make sure your paralyzed father is back on his feet for many of you god will engage you you will pray fast and prepare yourself until your father gets born again god will do for him what he did for saul he will drink juice and as he's going to the kitchen to keep the cup he will see a light like saul saw it and god will say you can't kick against the priest 
climb up. Are you listening to me? Renard Bonke calls it evangelism by fire. It's a year when you do a lot of things. Many of you will begin to write articles by the Spirit. The inspiration of the kingdom will come upon you. You will begin to write articles. Before you know it, a media house will call you. And see, this is a year of limitless possibilities. Doing great things for the kingdom. Many of you will begin to write tracts and translate it in Hausa and send it to Funtua, send it to places. We are not the kind of ministry that believes that people should sit down. We are the only one. No, everybody. You are, we are the gifts that equip the ministers. Are you listening to me? This is the year when God will do surprising things. For many of you, this is the year when you begin to hold prayers for your class members. That's how you will start. You drag all of them plus the drunkards. Let's go to court. And then you pray and tell them Jesus loves you. The guy has been looking for you. He's always coming around you. And one day you say, okay, sit down. You get two chairs. And wash out Babylon out of him. And then when you do that, you tell him you are the first member of this class meeting. We are going to be meeting once a week and pray over our academics. You will be calling the people for the prayer. You are the one who will be giving you a recharge card. Are you listening to me? For some of you, your ministry will be this year to go and speak to all the people who are all the market people that you go and buy something from. That every time you buy, you talk to them. I'm saying, this is a year when God is not just giving us grace to be rich and to be smiling because there's greater responsibility. Are you listening to me? Rise up on your feet. We are going to pray. And then we are done. There will be a series of teachings this year. There will be many activities. Brace up yourself. Are you listening to me? Concerning the security situation in the country, I bring you a word of the Lord. All those who perpetrate evil in this country, their days are numbered. Their days are numbered. Are you listening to me? Their days are numbered. God is about to reveal himself in this country as the man of war. That man that Revelation said he rides upon a white horse. And out of his mouth a double-edged sword proceeds. People will sleep in this country and not wake up again. Without the interference of any man. The Lord of Sabaoth will arise by himself in this country. So I bring you a message of hope. Whether you live in Kano or Meduguri or Abuja or Kaduna. Fear not. Fear not. God is faithful. And God will help us. Are you listening to me? We are going to take 5 to 10 minutes to pray in the spirit in light of the prophetic word. And you are just going to pray and say you are positioning yourself. Are we ready to do that? Are you ready to do that? Hold your hands all over in this building. And let's begin to pray in the spirit. Come on, pray. We are aligning with prophecy. We position our spirits. Kare bau shakata la brega de bau sakata foto shakata. E kara badau sakata. And I will fill this house with my glory. Kala banana soso brega de bau sakata. E kara bau shakata le brega de bau sakata. Kara badon de bau shakala la ba. Brega bau soso brega de bau la ba. E prakata e tanoi soso brega de bau. Bela bau shakata la brega de Make sure you are praying, 
Hallelujah. Now listen. You're going to prophesy favor to all the 12 calendar months in your life this year. Are you listening? You're going to say from this meeting tonight, you are walking in on the, one of the things that will characterize our lives corporately is the fearful operation of the favor of God. You will hear testimonies of the grace and the favor of God. So we are praying right now for that dimension called favor. Are you ready to pray? Go ahead and speak. Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time. Your job, 
in your family favor the favor of the Lord favor in my relationship Favor. In ministry, we enjoy favor. Favor upon the In 2012, favor over our finances. Favor. Favor the finances. Favor in the name of Jesus. Favor. Great favor. Great favor. Beyond our prayer life. Beyond our word life. By the sure mercies of the God of David. By the sure mercies of the God of David. Hallelujah. Pasa katala makosa to the bounce. Listen to me. Hallelujah. Many of us have been held back by certain mistakes of the past and challenges of the past. And every time God speaks a word like this, whenever we want to take steps, guilt brings us back. Can I tell you something? It's by the grace of God. The mercy of God speaks for you. Are you listening to me? This is not the year to allow Satan speak to you and say you that last year you have been sleeping around from January to December. There is therefore now. Now. There was yesterday. There is therefore now. No condemnation. Are you listening to me? When Satan reminds you of your past, remind him of his future. Satan's past is better than his future. As a horrible life. That your best is behind you. And you know it. Hallelujah. And right around say, God, I need your enablement to go through this year. Listen, this is not the year when by February, what you used to believe and jump about in January suddenly becomes foolishness. There are many believers who start with vigor. But because we don't have the enabling grace and the staying power. When certain things just move against seemingly what the word of God says should be. Many of us begin to waver. Hallelujah. But you are going to pray for enablement. Many of us in school are going to take courses. You know that because of the ASU strike there is already a lag. And when you resume there is going to be a lot of work. Many of us are in final year. And you need to catch up with a lot of things. You need grace. Many of us are master students. Some of us are PhD students. You need enabling grace. Are you following me now? We need grace. Combining your academics with service. And some of you are working and are doing other things. Grace. You are going to say, Lord, a supernatural enablement. That I will do more than my bare hands can do. Lift up your voice and pray. Enabling grace. Great in your life. Grace. That supplies power to move beyond my human capacity. The power to think beyond your human capacity. The power to speak beyond your human capacity. The power to do to accomplish things beyond your human capacity. 
Hallelujah. Listen, this is the year when we will stand as light. Are you listening to me? There's no more silence. There's no trying to be nice. No. This is the year where we step out in light. And this is who we are. This is who we represent. This is what we carry. This is what we can do. Grace to say no. That even if a thousand people are saying yes. To what is against the principles of God. You will stand and say no. Grace to face the crowd. And say no. The Bible says the grace of God has appeared unto all men. Teaching us to say no. There is grace to say no. Everything cannot be yes in 2012. Many of us yet said yes to everything in 2011. And we landed into trouble. Grace. Grace to say no to your emotions when God wants to speak to you. And you are tired. Many of us will need to stay awake for hours. And sleep only a few times. It takes grace. Otherwise we will break down. There's grace. It's not the year to get sick. There's too much work to be done. Are you listening to me? It's not the year to sit and negotiate with Satan. And say, okay, Satan, let's, let me rest in January. You can, no! No matter how mad a man is, he knows what fire is. No matter how mad a man is, he knows what fire is. I've never seen a madman go near fire in the name of madness. As mad as he is, his, his, his senses, his neurons are still working. He goes near fire. The Bible says he maketh his angels, uh, spirits, and his ministers flames of fire. It's not the time to sit down and organize prayer sessions for Satan. We will stamp on him and move. There's work to be done. There's work to be done. Are you listening to me? Somebody calls you and says, I'm just announcing to you that this year will be a bad year. Tell him, thank you. I feel sorry for you. And you will not even pray about it. You go and concentrate and do something better. This is a year where you hear you have a dream. And in dream, you see that every member of your family died. And you get up and say, Lord, I give you thanks. You are more than worthy to be praised. And you just continue your work. No depression whatsoever. 
this is the year where someone looks at you and says you are good for nothing tell him you your words doesn't really matter my destiny just have a nice day i'm not offended you can have a glorious day not telling me i will talk to you you are above anybody that tries to tell you just say i'm above i'm too serious i'm too focused on the things above to distract myself with the things that are below are you listening to me this is not the year to start talking and say hey, people are saying this have you heard people are saying what is your ah, you, you are there is work to be done are you listening to me father we thank you for this year it's a season of great grace and glory we will accomplish more for the kingdom this year than we have all through our lives in the name of the lord jesus christ in one minute i'd like you to just pray for koinonia this year pray for the house go ahead and pray say lord accomplishments pray for the ministers stay in grace pray that we we'll teach truth in righteousness no perversion of truth pray for grace as we travel all around the country pray for grace pray for all the people who will be coming pray for the hundreds and thousands who will be saved this year who will be healed this year pray for all our miracle services lord we have seen your hand last year greater manifestations this is the year when when you invite someone for the miracle service before he arrives god will use your hand to rock the miracle for him he will just come to testify pray pray against the spirit of distraction go ahead and pray pray against the spirit of deception pray against error that will teach the truth of christ with accuracy and power pray for transformation go ahead and pray say lord we pray for every single one that there will be true transformation that will not just be doing church will not just be doing religion but that will truly be growing conforming to the image and the character of christ and manifesting his grace and glory even in our daily lives pray for all our projects accomplishments by the spirit hallelujah hallelujah hopefully by next week or in two weeks time we will announce officially the activities we have for the year hallelujah i just like you to brace up and um, use this time the school you know as a believer you can make everything work out for your good is that correct there are many people who have maximized the asu strike and it has been a great ladder for them spiritually are you following me we pray that soon enough the federal government will get into reasonable negotiations with ASU. Hallelujah. But while that is happening, use the opportunity before assignments and other things begin to come. Are you listening to me? Eat for the journey is far. Now is the time to get books. Now is the time to settle down. Are you listening to me? Many of us are around. There's not much that we are doing in the day. You can hang around in the night. You can go to your rooms, share the word together, build yourself, explore grace hallelujah a major book i'd like you to read this year is um unmerited favor by joseph prince if you can get a hold of it unmerited favor by joseph prince it's going to be a major book that will help you the emergence of the glorious church bishop david oedeko the emergence the glorious church hallelujah and any kingdom series by dr miles munro anyone really just anyone will bless you anyone by dr miles munro will bring some other books as as the months go by but you can start with these two books very very powerful hallelujah hallelujah lord we give you praise you're worshiping with us for the first time in 2012 want to appreciate you please i'd like you to leave your seat quickly and come out hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs 
I say, is my son. Attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.